Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at setting up a Sonoff mini device. So, I know there's quite a few tutorials out there already about this, however, uh, they did update the process on how we uh, flash the device. So, I'll just quickly go over and show you guys how we can custom flash the firmware onto or flash Tasmoto onto the device and then we can also take a look at adding it into Home Assistant. So with that said, let's go in and take a look. So a quick rundown. The first thing we need to do is we download the EWE Link Smart Home app from the App Store. Once you've installed that, it's going to ask you to set up a new account or log into your existing one if you already have one. Once you have that set up, we'll need to add the son of device to our home. So to add it, we just click on the add button. We can use the quick setup option if we need to, and it'll guide us through the process. So we'll put the son of device into flashing mode. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you need to be on a 2.4 gigahertz network for the son of device to be able to connect to your Wi-Fi. To put it in flashing mode, we'll just you'll push down the son of button until it flashes rapidly and then it should be detected within the app. You can just follow the on-screen instructions. Now we need to update this device. So to update it, we'll open up the options for the son of we just added in here. Once we have that open, open, we can click to the top right, you'll see there's three dots. To view the current version, we can just go up and click on the actual current version option and it'll bring up a additional menu which will ask us to update the Sonoff device. So we'll just click on update and we'll click on confirm and that's going to update the Sonoff device to the latest version which will then allow us to, to flash it to with our custom firmware. Now to put the device into flashing mode, all you'll need to do is, I'll show you guys a picture right here. So all we need to do is we open up the son of device and you'll see that there is a little jumper right here. And all we do is there's a jumper that comes in the box with the son of device. All you'll do is you'll just plug in that jumper and then make sure you close up everything again. Please make sure that you do close it up because it's very important. Once we have updated that, we closed up to box we can put it back together and it should create a new Wi-Fi network a new Wi-Fi network and the name should look similar to this one um, ITEAD with a random number at the end you can go in and connect with the generic password one two three four five six seven eight and that should connect to that network now to add in uh, the device or to connect it to our home network we need to go to the 10.10 .10 7.1 IP address in our browser. We're going to click on Wi-Fi settings, entering our Wi-Fi uh, access point name, so the name of your Wi-Fi network, and then also your password down below. Hit save, and that's going to connect it to our home network. Okay, so once we have connected our Sun Optimize, we need to download the Sun of Tool as well as the firmware. So the first thing we need to do is we go to the Sun of Tool. We open up the tool folder and just download the exe file in here. Now, while we have this busy downloading, we still need to get that bin file. So we'll open up the Tasmoto GitHub page. And once we're on here, we can look for the releases on this specific page as well. So if you scroll a bit down, you should see an option where it shows releases. We can just click on that and that should take us to the releases page of all the bin files in there. If we scroll down, um, there's a lot of information in here, but we're looking for all the files. So you'll see we have them listed right here. In here, the specific one that we are looking for is going to be the Tasmoto light bin. We don't need the normal bin, we need the light one. Um, that's a bit smaller in size, which is the only one that will fit on the uh, Sonoff Mini that we have. So we download that. Once that has downloaded, we can go in and open up our Sonoff flashing tool. We already have our device connected to the Wi-Fi network, so it should detect it automatically right there. So as you can see, it is showing up in here. All we need to do is we click on the settings option once we have it selected and then browse for our bin file we want to flash onto this device. So we'll go to the downloads folder where I downloaded the Son of Light bin. Just select that to be able to flash it to our device. 
Now, in here, you may get an, a message. You can just say yes and then just click um, OK one more time because you're sure you do want to format it had the issue with this. Um, you can just say yes and it, it should start flashing this device. Now, once this has flashed, it should go back to the normal setup process of when you first uh, flashed as motor to a device. So we'll need to go back and reconnect to the uh, created Wi-Fi network as well. So we'll give that a minute to just restart. So we'll just say yes, that has been completed. And we'll wait for it to restart and it should show as a new Wi-Fi network that's available to connect to. So we check our Wi-Fi networks and we see we do have a TAS motor network we can connect to. We'll connect to that, open up the standard IP address uh, that TAS motor creates uh, or web address, which is going to be 192.168.4.1. And then once we're in there, we need to enter in our Wi-Fi information again. So basic Wi-Fi information, click save, then it's going to restart that device. We need to find the new IP address of that service motor and we should be able to turn the sun off on and off. One thing we may want to do is configure the module to add in those GPIO pins that's on it. So when you turn the switch on and off, it actually turns on and off the switch. You can put it exactly as shown in the video right here. So once we have that set up, we just hit the save button. It's going to restart the sun off device. We need to configure our MQTT so it connects to our um, MQTT server. And then the very last thing in here is in the console. We type in set option 19 so it'll allow Home Assistant to automatically detect that device. Once we have everything set up, we should be able to go to our Home Assistant installation and the device should automatically show up in our configuration as well and we'll be able to add that to our Lovelace. There we go. There we go, guys. So that's going to be it for this one. I tried making it a bit shorter, but I'm not sure if I'll be doing this again in the future. It took quite a lot more time than it would have me just going through and setting up as I move along through these steps. Um, so in the next video, I may go back to the old way of setting it up. And I think it's more informative setting it up that way as well. But if you guys do have any questions or you do get stuck, I know I went through this quite fast. So if you do have any questions or you do get stuck, feel free to ask below and I'd be happy to answer them as I get to those. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one.